from a ruckus crowd here at Jim A at Shaley Area High School where tonight it'll be a battle between two undefeated teams to see who can keep their unbeaten season alive. Hi, I'm Matt Brooker alongside Mark Povich. And tonight we have two of the best teams in the Whippeal going at. We'll start out first with the 5-0 Hampton Talbots. You know, Matt, both teams going into this undefeated. The Talbots definitely are going to use our height tonight as an advantage. But they're going to the one standout for the team is going to be Peter Kramer as he's been averaging about 28 points per game. The Titans are going to figure out to figure out how to lock him out. But the Talbots, they are just going to have to look to get inside the paint, get rebounds. That's going to be the big thing tonight, using their height to their advantage. But tonight, what can we expect from the Titans, Matt? At their home turf, facing an undefeated Talbots. What are you talking about? The Titans are 6-0 on the season, picked up a quality win over North Hills last Saturday at LaRoche. And for these Titans, they're going to have to win on the boards. Hampton, as we talked about in the pregame before we started, Hampton has a huge size advantage. The Titans are going to have to box out and be able to hang with them on rebounds. But who I'm looking for tonight is Keegan Smetanka. His mid-range game is the best, one of the best I've ever seen from a high schooler. He's going to get open. I'd say for the Titans to win, he's got to be a big part. And also their shooting in general. Get their three-point shooting game back into action. Julian Vizaka, Kay Norga, Keegan Smetanka, and then Brandon London. He's got to get his points as well. He can't be shut out by Kramer tonight. So what is your big key for Hampton if they're going to try to win this game? Definitely rebounds and just getting uh, getting inside the paint underneath the hoop and just putting up a lot of points that way. Titans are going to have to do more shooting. All right, that's it downstairs as we're going to say it up to the booth for coverage of this early season tilt here in WPIAL basketball. And welcome back to the booth for coverage of tonight's game. And if the student section is any indicator of this one, we are in for quite the treat, Mark. You yeah, might can't say it well. Couldn't have said it better. The atmosphere in this gymnasium tonight is nothing like it. This is the most packed I've seen the gym in years. It has been phenomenal to turn out here tonight from both Shaler and Hampton. As it'll be London and Magadna in there for the tip-off. And the Route 8 rivalry is underway. Hampton wins the tip-off. This is A.J. Prudente with the ball. Pass it over to Nicholas. He's going to shoot from three. No good. And rebounds. The official's going to say last touch by Orga. And Hampton will retain possession. Successfully able to get the inbounds pass in. Kramer for three, and he misses it. Air ball there from Kramer. He's their leading scorer, averaging over 28 points per game. A big reason why this Hampton team is 5-0. If he shoots more shots like that, Hampton's going to be in a lot of trouble. Now Smetanka with the ball over to Di Sabato. Pass inside to Smetanka, and he loses the ball. Something that's been really good for Hampton has been their zone against the Titans. It's a good defensive play to knock that out of bounds. As Shaler was embarrassed at Hampton last year, lost by over 20 points, they're going to be hoping that result changes now in their favor this time around. Kramer now for three, and no good again off the back of the iron, and London's going to step out of bounds trying to save it. And Hampton will get the ball once again. That's in the big fella. That's deflected away by London. And the official's going to say Oreo was on the line again. And the Titans can't seem to get the ball out of the defensive end. Yeah, a lot of out of bounds here as we uh, the Titans haven't been able to get the, uh, the inbounds. Still 0-0. As Hanton will reset near the timeline. Pass inside. And he walked. That's their big guy, Liam McGogna, standing at six foot nine. That's going to be a problem for London tonight. Yeah, definitely. London didn't usually see him pretty tall in the court, but tonight he's looking pretty short. 
over a minute gone by in the opening quarter, still 0-0. Titans have yet to shoot the ball. Spatanka in the corner, and he's going to say he walked. First offensive possession for the Titans ends up in a travel. Well, they had two offensive possessions and two turnovers. Luckily, they aren't down yet, as Hampton hasn't scored either. But this is looking like the game last year. It was a very slow start. It was 5-3, I believe, at the end of the first quarter, Hampton. Good pass inside to Kramer, and he slams it home for the first bucket of the game. Now coming the other way, the Titans look inside to London. Pivots around. Takes it inside, kicked out to De Sabato. Miller, Jimmy inside the paint, the kick out to Orga. Thought about a three, gonna take it back out. Six minutes left to go in the first quarter. De Sabato's gonna run the point. Gonna send in the Smetanka, back out to De Sabato. Smetanka again. Gonna shoot an elbow jumper and he drills it. Keegan Smetanka with the jumper to give the Titans their first point into the game and tie it at two. Now, Matt, you see from the crowd reactions that you'd think the game would be a lot higher. Maybe in the 20s or 30s, but no, only two to two. This Route 8 rivalry has produced a lot of close games in all sports as the layup inside, no good. Robert Cole off the mark for the Talbots. There's a huge rebound there by London, though, to get the ball back for the Titans. He's about on the inside. And Orga will reset. Rebounding a key, key part for both of these teams. Hampton can't really afford to lo lose the rebounding battle considering the size advantage they have. While for Shayla, every board they can get, every disruption they can make helps them out a lot because they have the skill and the speed, but Hampton has the size. Orga in the inside. Kicks it back out to Matanka. Working against the 2-3 zone. Four and a half minutes left to go in the opening quarter. The score is tied two to two. Pass inside to London. Working inside and finishes with some contact. Brandon London working on the big man, Magogna. It's a huge ball there by London, but you saw decent battle right behind him in case for the rebound. London is not afraid of anyone, as evident by that play. Pass inside, finds Kramer open under the basket. Get Di Sabato not able to get there. And he Perfect ties up the game. Di Sabato drive inside. London. Gonna pass out to Smetenko. Short jumper, no good off the mark. Kramer with the rebound. It's always a tricky shot there. Not quite a layup, but you have to shoot it. You don't practice that shot too often. Now they double in the corner, and they're gonna call a jump ball. And that'll be Shaler's possession. Got Kramer tied up, and now the Titan subs will come in. Number 11, Sam Hemrod. In 3.41 left to go in the first quarter. Score tied four to four. Both of these teams have been averaging over 60 points a game. Has not looked that way so far. Inside the Spatek, he's gonna turn around jumper and he's blocked. But somehow is able to get the rebound. Probably won't be the first time we call Magogna for a block. Titans setting up the play in the front court. Saka takes a dribble, finds it inside. London has it. Titans, we're going to look to see if they can beat Hampton zone. Kimrod on the drive, and he is blocked from behind, but they're going to call the foul. They're going to call the blocking foul on Liam McGogna. So McGogna was saying he got the ball. Yes, he did, but he also got the body on the block first, and that's what drew the foul. Sam Himrod on the line, he makes his first. He 
He had a good game over Stowe Rocks, had 11 points in that one. And he goes two for two from the charity stripe. You see the mat? The Titans have been struggling from the free throw line this year, averaging about they a 65% make rate. Uh, it's good to see uh, Hemrod be able to put two up there. Yeah, like we talked about in the South Vietnam game, which is the last game we broadcast, you got to be able to make free throws against such a good team as Hampton and as South Fayette. And if this is another close game like that one was, which is an all-time classic if you haven't watched it yet, they're going to have to make free throws just the same. Pass inside. Hemron lost his man, but he missed the layup. Nillis had a golden opportunity to tie the game, but he missed the bunny. Now Titans at the other end. Looking patient, drive inside. Bellas, he's gonna shoot for three and he drills it. You know, Matt, I was watching Bellas during warmups and he was locked in. I think he made seven straight threes and coming out of the gate, you wanna take a three early, gives the Titans a nine to four lead. Definitely the energy the Titans needed to start this game. Kramer with the ball. Dribbles inside, a tough shot, and he's going to draw the foul. Himrod got him on the arm going up. Now send Kramer to the line. I haven't seen a lot from Kramer tonight so far. As we still have about two minutes left, but he, zero points tonight so far as the leading scorer. Kramer misses his first. And if you remember back to the South Fayette game, the student section was a big factor. South Fayette had a chance to win the game before going to overtime, but they missed two layups back to, sorry, two free throws back to back that allowed Shaler to stay in the game. But Kramer does make his second and makes the score nine to five. And Himrod's gonna give it away to Kramer, but luckily for Shaler area, he stepped on the line. A big problem for Shaler in their last year's matchup was just the sheer amount of turnovers they committed. They cannot get anywhere close to that amount. I think it was somewhere in the neighborhood of 15 turnovers, 16 turnovers, something like that. They've already had three today. London working on the inside, spinning around, no good. Good defense there from McNogna. Yeah, there's a height advantage right there, Matt. You saw Brett London went back up for the rebound, but he's just not able to get there. One of the few players that can defend him is Bellis gets a lucky bounce from the official's foot to keep the ball. Himrod, he's got open three, drills it, and he drains it. That is a huge thing, putting the Titans up 12 to five. Three point shooting is gonna be a key for these Titans. Two for two so far, one from Bellis, and now you just saw the one from Himrod. Under a minute to go, Titans up 12 to five. Borgo, the star running back for the Talbots. Sends it over to Nillis. Kramer, working inside, and we have no shot. And it looks like they're gonna call a foul. I think they're gonna give it on Bellis, yes. As he was coming in and got too much of the body there. Now Smetenka will come off. Orga back on for the Titans. Pass inside and Bellis is gonna have his second foul in one second. And that's a quick way to get subbed out. Two fouls in that short of a time. Bellis isn't a starter but you wanna make you don't want to have your guys in foul trouble. Pass it in to Cole. Kramer with it. Now over to Butler. Borgo. Now Nillis. Under 30 seconds left to go. Pass inside and Cole makes a wide open layup. Cuts the deficit to five.
10 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Needs to battle with it. Dribbles it inside. And he's gonna be stuffed. Kramer will take it. One second at the buzzer, no good. And all in all, a pretty good first quarter for the Titans as after one, Shayla Area leads 12 to seven over the Hampton Talbots. We'll be back as we start second quarter coverage here on SATV. And welcome back as we are just about ready to start the second quarter. Titans up 12 to seven over the Talbots. Your leading scorers for Shaler, Sam Himrod with five points. And Peter Kramer for Hampton has five points as well. But the big difference there is Shaler has had more contributors and it's why they're up 12 to seven as Hampton will get the ball to start the second quarter. Kramer, pass to Cole. Working on Miller inside, up and under move, and he makes it. Got Miller to jump, and that left him with a wide open rebound. He's got four. Titans reset the other end. DiSabato over the Miller. Gets it back. Some quick passes for the Titans. Lund will take it back out, Orga. Titans being discipli disciplined as well as the Talbots. It's a good play there by Tatanka to able to keep control of the ball. It nearly had it stripped from him. Inside now, London. And they're gonna say offensive foul. As Liam Magogna what you're trained to do in that situation is even if, if you're as tall as he is, take the contact, go down. And just taking a look, I don't have Magogna's weight, but I'm pretty sure he outweighs London by at least 30 pounds. Prudente will take it up the court. This guy's trail 12 to nine. And you usually see a lot of contact there underneath the hoop, Matt. And it's hard to call a contact call there. Pass inside, Nillis, no good. Orga is able to push the ball over to DiSabato, and here come the Titans the other way. Spatega pulls up for three, no good. Tried the transition jumper, no good. And here come the Talbots the other way. Oh, Kramer is going to shoot a three, and he has not been good from the three point arc tonight. Looks like DiSabato got hit in the face there. As Smetanka drew the contact, he's gonna go to free throw line, almost got the end one. And DiSabato still a little bit shaken up after that elbow. Now, Shale Area's best free throw shooter, Keegan Smetanka steps to the line. He has missed only one free throw the entire season. And as expected, he drains this one there. He's in the neighborhood of 95% from the free throw line, which is just absurd. And the announcer's jinx there as he misses the second. Titans up 13 to nine. Nillis. Moving out of Prudente. Sends it over the shot from three, and he drills it. Nillis, his first points of the night come from behind the three-point line. Closing and that deficit there to now only one. Titans to 13, Talbot to 12. London on the inside, short corner. Pull it back out to Miller. Titans have not scored in the second quarter except for this Matenka free throw. Pass inside, and that's taken away. Another turnover for the Titans, threw it right to McNogna. And Hampton has a chance to take the lead on this possession. 
Vente inside, looking for Kramer. And they're gonna call a foul on Miller. Trying to reach in and take the ball away from Kramer. And Hampton's gonna call a 30 second timeout as the Titans make substitutions. What have you seen this third in this second quarter from Hampton, Mark? I've seen a lot more aggressiveness there as they've put up a lot more points. What is it so far? About six points so far. And uh, the Titans are just not responded. Yeah, five points to Hampton to Shaler's one. There's been a lot of turnovers from the Titans, as you said earlier. They just they 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 average about 15 per game, which is not acceptable if they want to go all the way. Yeah, Hampton's gone to the zone. How Hampton runs their zone has been a problem for the Shale area Titans the past several matchups they've gone against them. Yeah, the Titans would just keep the ball and not give it back to the, the, the Talbots. The Titans are going to run away with this game. Back when Logan Burnesser played, they had a guy that could match up with McGogna. But without Burnesser, who stood at a nice 6 and 7, is now a three pointer, no good. Orga there to scoop up the rebound for the Titans. Yeah, just finish my point. So they don't that. Burnesser, who was six foot seven, so it's going to be a little bit harder to defend them. And Hampton going to the zone has been helpful, having those big guys down low. Fizaka, a deep three, no good. Himrod trying to get the rebound, able to get it to London, and he finishes off the rebound. Brandon London able to pull it away from some of the bigger guys, and increases Shaler's lead now to three. Dente working on Orga. Backdoor pass. And they're going to call the foul. The officials have been on fouls. They've called a lot of fouls, especially on the Shaler's defensive end. As they're not getting, not letting any team getting away, away with fouls in this one. Pass out to Kramer. Working on Himrod. Tried to dive for the ball, but he missed. Gets back up. Kramer looks like he got away with a little bit of a push off there. But nevertheless, it's out of bounds and the Shaler area will get back the ball. Four oh three left to go in the second quarter. The Titans up 15 to 12. Warrior will bring it up. Bazaka inside London squares up, turns around. Niederberger telling his guys to attack from the sideline. Orga shoots the three, drills it. Kane Norga for three, puts the Titans up 18 to 12. Titans up over 60% from three. Titans creating that deficit again over the Talbots. Just over three minutes left to go. Titans up 18 to 12. Prudente with the ball for the Talbots. Prudente. Back now over to Cole. Backdoor pass. Kramer on the inside, and they're going to call the block. Now it looked like to me that London did not get his feet set. Sorry, Smetanka did not get his feet set. And he was also right underneath the basket. They're usually going to call the block there. As that sends Kramer back to the line. One for three now from the, three, from the free throw line. been sitting on five points ever since the end of the first quarter. Now he gets his sixth. Score now 18 to 13. And that's something the Titans are going to have to deal with is backdoor cuts. Titans have been beaten almost every single time on those. If I'm Coach Niederberger, that's what I'm going into the half to talk about. Now, meanwhile, the other end, London, able to get around Magogna. 
and finish at the rim. Now 20 to 13 Titans. Kramer, a deep three, no good. And we're gonna have a foul as Vizaka was fouled trying to get the rebound. That was a, this has been a good couple of possessions for the Titans. They struggled a little bit in the, early in the second quarter, but now they've extended their lead up to seven, their largest of the night. Titans working against the Hampton zone. Fazaka takes it to his left. Now sends it back out to Smetanka. Fazaka, a deep three. And that one missed the mark. But I think Shaler got a timeout in. Yes, yeah, so they're going to give the timeout to Shaler, and it was a good thing they did because that shot was not particularly close to scoring. Titans still leading 20 to 13 over the Talbots. The Titans just need to keep the score pretty far away from each other. That definitely determines the, how the energy of the game is going. The well, Titans have the energy, the Titans are going to win it. Talbots have to try to keep this game close. They've really struggled at the offensive end. Especially the leading scorer, Kramer, has not showed up tonight so far. Kramer only has six points. He's been averaging up over 28. He has not been himself. Give credit to the Titan defense, but also he's been struggling for the free throw line. He's been off on his three-point shooting. But now for the Titans, I'm pretty sure that timeout was to talk about how to attack the zone. In the zone, when you're playing zone defense, you want to get the offense to slow down. And that's what Shaler has been doing now, is he's been slowing down. But on the flip side, if you go too fast against the zone, you're more likely to commit turnover. So there's that balance there the Titans need to find. I'm likely the coach is telling them just to pick it up a little bit. Now Hampton switches their zone to a 1-3-1. Vizaka for three, and he makes it. Julian Vizaka now drills the three. His first points of the night. Able to make up for the last one. Titans up now by 10. Kramer over to Prudente. Inside to Cole. Inside, and it's going the other way. Himrod draws the charge. As you said, Matt, any sign of contact, you want to try and take it as you can draw a foul, get the ball back, and it puts the Titans on the offense once again. Now, in a couple of the charges, I didn't think were that too strong a foul, but, but they're still a foul. And it was a good job by him right there to take the pass. But they tried to take one earlier. When you're up against these big guys and you're smaller, just some sort of unconscious bias allows you to get more of those charge calls. So Hampton expanding the zone. They've had to switch it up here with the Titans' run ending the second quarter. So Orga's going to take it. Titans in no rush. Under 30 seconds left to go in the half. 15 seconds. Orga's got the ball. The hero against South Fayette. Inside the Himrod, open underneath the basket, and he's going to be fouled. Kramer tried to reach for the ball, but caught Himrod's arm in the process. Titans keep the ball. Five seconds. Orga. Going to put one up there. No good off the rim. And that's the end of the first half. So the Titans close off the half strong. And they lead it here 23 to 13. Stay tuned as we'll be back for second half coverage of this pivotal Whippy Old contest.
halftime show where the Shale Area Titans lead the Hampton Talbots 23 to 13. And really it's been two very similar quarters. The Titans won the first quarter 12 to 7 and the Tal and the, over the Talbots and then won the second quarter 11 to 6. But for what the student section thinks over there at Shaler ESPN, let's set down to Mark Povich. I'm down here with Jordan Winters from the ESPN, the Shaler ESPN table. But Jordan, what have you seen tonight from these Titans that you want to see more of? Um, a lot of good three-pointers have been going on tonight, but I want to see Brandon London get more active tonight. From the Titans, what have they done offensively and defensively that has really helped them have the 23-13 to 13 lead? I feel like offense had an, uh, no turnovers, maybe one or two, and we've just been having good defense. They couldn't have been making shots. And how has such a big rivalry in, impacted this game? Well, I mean, it started with football, and it's just last year we lost. So, like, this year, we're going to try to get the dub. Well, the energy is real down here at the Shaler ESPN table in the student section, but we're going to send it back up to the booth no for the rest of you guys Shaler. Right, okay. right, thanks, Mark, for the interview, and now we can our halftime show. Now, two minutes left to go before the start of the third quarter. Join us as the second half. This looks like it's going to be a good one. And welcome back as we are just about ready to start the second half. 30 seconds until we do. And Mark, you got to talk to the student section, what they felt about the game. But for us up here, you take a look at this game and you can, there are a couple of things you can take away from it. First, the zone hasn't been as effective as Hampton would have liked. But I think the bigger takeaway for Hampton is that Peter Kramer has had an off night. Yeah, I definitely think it's a more of like the, you know how football they call it the 12th man on the field? This is more of the sixth man on the court. The student section and the crowd has just really impacted the game, I feel. Because Kramer has just had an off night so far, and I feel it could have been from that. Kramer has been the heart and soul of this Talbot team. It is not an insurmountable deficit by any means. They're only down by 10. But in this slow-paced game, this 10 feels like 20. Hampton once again expanding the zone. Spatenka from the elbow. And he makes it once again. Come out the second one of those shots of the night. Coming out of halftime, Titans want to get a bucket since they had the ball, but they got it. Up 25 to 13. Inside, looking for McNogna and off the back iron. Titans now coming the other way. Another thing I've seen tonight, Matt, is a lot of missed layups here from the Talbots. McNogna being such a height advantage here, you feel like you should make almost every single one of those. Also, Kramer making those, missing them. Titans have been a better team so far tonight, and that's why they lead it here. Still a lot of basketball to play, though. London's going to take it back out. Titans should be in, in no hurry to try to score. No shot clock in high school, although that has been tried to get passed by Pennsylvania. It isn't the case in other states. Orga for three. Titans have been on fire from beyond the three-point arc. And it, sh and it shows once again his second three tonight. Kane Oregon, now they turn it over. Here comes Matanka the other way. Inside, pull up, no good. Miller with the rebound. He goes up again and off the mark. And now one in gets it. What has happened to the Hampton Talbots? It's Matanka for three. And he drains it. Keegan Smetanka. That puts it at him, the lead scorer for tonight's game so far at eight points. I don't know what just happened, but there was a sudden burst of energy that the Titans capitalized on. It was turn after turn after turnover. It's been raining threes inside Jim A. And Hampton is distraught over there in that huddle right now. Their coach is trying to light a fire under this team. As Shaler has come out of the second half strong. Eight straight points for the Titans. What you're looking at now is Shaler Area's pet band that we have to just to increase the energy even more. It's always nice to see people come out and support our Shaler Area Fighting Titans. Yeah. 
They're enjoying this one. Titans up 31 to 13. Titans cannot fall asleep though. Hampton is more than capable of making a comeback. They are undefeated this season, 5-0. Shaler is 6-0, combined 11-0. These teams know how to win. Inside, Prudente, spin around, jumper, no good. Took a deflection, Di Sabato came down with the rebound. Under some pressure, he's able to get rid of it though. Over to Orga, wide open for three. And he makes it once again. As I said in pregame, Matt, shooting has been a huge thing for the Titans, and they are just locked in tonight. His third three-pointer of the night, he's got nine points, he leads all scores. Pull with it over inside. Di Sabato and Kramer's gonna take a hard fall there as he got elbowed in the face. And if I remember correctly, he elbowed Di Sabato. I was about to say, it's more time. of like a payback kind of thing there. Di Sabato got hit pretty hard. What but goes the refs didn't see that one though, so what goes around comes around. Hampton on the inbound. London on Kramer. London sticking with Kramer. He's got the speed advantage, decides to pull it from three, and it's just been an off night for Kramer. And I don't understand why against London, probably the Titans' worst perimeter defender, they're trying to pull it from three. On the other end, Spatanka gets his shot tipped. London's, London's gonna rip it away, but they're gonna call the foul before. And he made a couple of catches like that during the football season. And that's a really good get for playing tight end. One of the best tight ends in the whippy hole. And in basketball, a tight end is very similar to a very similar to a center in that aspect. Di Sabata will reset things. Gonna spin around Prudente. Kicks it back out. Tightens up 34 to 13. We take it inside. And a block there from Kramer. And here come the Talbots the other way. Cole, spin move working on Orga. And he switched his pivot foot there, and it's a travel. That was some good defense from Tate Orga, though. Although they did get the travel call, the shot was not going in no matter what from Orga. And it's just been like this all night long. Hampton has somehow forgotten how to score. Smetanka. Working on Prudente. Take it back out now, Orga. To the inside, finds London under the basket. And that'll be blocked once again by McNogna. And if you're London, you gotta keep go trying to attack the rim. He's gonna block them every once in a while. Kramer. Two Titans in pursuit. Inside. Good defense there from London. And that's gonna be going the other way. Good work there from Brandon London on the inside. And that's a big one. That's McNaughton's third foul of the game. Is there a big guy in the middle? And is why Brandon London has been, only been held to six points tonight. The other thing you haven't seen from the Titans tonight is a lot of uh, fouls. Everyone's had one except Bellis has had two. No Titans are in foul trouble in this one, as Mark just mentioned. 3.48 left to go in the third quarter. The Titans up 34-13. After an offensive explosion to start the half. Bellis. Top, around the top of the key. Loses possession, it's taken away. Millis the other way, and they make the layup. And that is Hampton's first Alex points of the half. Millis. They trail by 19. Millis. 
And Vizaka tried to find London there. It was deflected off Cole's foot and out of play. And this is something that Shaleria wasn't able to do against South Fayette, is close them out. And for the Titans, you cannot afford to let Hampton back into the game. You want to make a statement here tonight. Both these teams, as we've mentioned several times, are undefeated. As Orga in the inside, he'll be fouled by Nillis. And they'll send Orga to the line. And as we saw in the South Fayette game, Orga was locked in during overtime, making all nine of his free throws. But it's definitely a man you want to see on the line right now. He sinks first. the first one. He sinks his first. And really it's just been a difference in fundamentals. The Titans have been more fundamentally sound. We're not afraid whatsoever of the Hampton zone that terrorized them last year. But he, he goes gets, two for two. That puts him at 11 points for the night. 11 points now for Orga. Now Hampton's feeling the same thing Shaler felt last year. Credente up the court. Kramer driving inside, blocked by Vizaka. With the rebound, Nillis, no good. Another offensive rebound, and they're finally able to put one in. Brock Borgo for two. That's his first points of the night. Olga inside, stops it, tried to find Miller, and that's a turnover. Coming back the other way, and Bellis will just have to foul Borgo. That's his third. For Hampton, this is how you get back in the game. Forcing turnovers. Titans are trying to force in those passes. And it's not like it was at the beginning of the half. Unfortunately for Hampton, this is a pretty big deficit they're going to close. But they, it's still definitely possible. They have a period and a half to go. And a bad pass there. I don't know what Border was trying to find there. And it's a turnover. Spitanka. Dribbling inside, pull up, jump shot, no good. Nillis wasn't able to secure it, but luckily for him, it was last touched by a Titan, and they'll get the ball back. Score 36 to 17, Shaler area on top of Hampton. Potente bringing it up. Gets it now to Kramer. Back now, Nillis for three. Off the mark, Fazaka is going to fight for the rebound, and he gets it. Niederberg is trying to call a timeout. And he's eventually going to get it. He called for that while Fazaka was in the corner. But they finally grant him as he breaks it up past half court. And this is one for Shale area. You call that timeout it's just to get yourself settled. You, a couple of turnovers here in these last few possessions. A missed shot by Smetanka. You just gotta calm everyone down. Like, look, this, this game's not over. It's not over. You gotta finish the game. Yeah, Matt, you, you explained it perfectly well. Titans just gotta keep up what they're doing. Change something now, and it could cost them a lot of points, which could just change the total energy of this game. Coming into the game, Shaler was ranked number two in the Whippeal 5A division while Hampton was ranked number three in the Whippeal 4A classification. So two very highly ranked teams, as we've restated. Neither team yet to lose, but Shaler has had the upper hand tonight. Himrod fighting through some contact. This is over to Miller, but he's blocked from behind by Kramer over to Vizaka, and he misses the three. Titans have been phenomenal from three-point range, but that one was no good as... You get tripped up by Spazanka there. Yeah, Titans just couldn't get out of the way of Kramer there, as that will be Spazanka's second foul. The big fella, Liam McGogna, checking back in the game for Hampton. Reminder, he is on three fouls. If he were to pick up his fourth here relatively quickly, that would leave Hampton without their center. They're looking for Magogna off the bat. Some good defense there from London. And whenever London has been able to 
provide good discipline defense, McGavga has had a hard time finishing. In fact, he hasn't been able to finish. He has zero points tonight. Miller takes it to the top. Under a minute left to go in the third quarter. Titans enjoying a comfortable 36-17 lead, at least for the moment. London. Himrod. Inside. And he is fouled from behind. Full reach in there. Couldn't get it cleanly. And Himrod will go back to the line. Kimrod back to the line, misses his first. 25.8 seconds left to go in the third quarter. But he redeems himself by making the second and increases Shaler's lead to 20. Hampton beats Shaler's press inside. Butler for three and that was off the mark. It's a huge air ball, about a foot short. And that is what the student section is chanting right now. Smetanka, tough jumper, and he makes it. We've seen a lot of those, those little jumper shots from Smetanka tonight. A spinorama from Smetanka finishes the third quarter, a dominant third quarter to say the least. The Titans up 22 points as they lead the Talbots 39 to 17. We'll be back to start the fourth quarter here on SATV. We're back as the pep band got the crowd fired up as we are about ready to start the fourth quarter. Hampton will get the ball to start. And just to show you how dominant that third quarter was for the Titans, they won that quarter 16 to four. In the previous, in the second quarter, they won it 11 to six. Titans have won every quarter and is why they're up by 20, two. Tenze will inbound it. Gonna throw it back to Kramer. The dribble inside, has it poked away from him. Catches it and goes up for the jumper. He was way off balance with that one. Because that one was lucky to hit the rim. Spatanka will bring it up. Kramer only has six points tonight, and he has been stuck on that since the first since the first half as London inside finishes there to make it 41-17 as Borgo was no match for him. That puts him at eight points for the night, London. Kramer doubled by London and Himrod's gonna throw it a great pass inside to Nillis who makes the tough finish. That was a great play there by the uh, Talbots. That was a great pass from Kramer is he going to try to double Spatenka, but he's too quick. Inside, Himrod kicks it out to Miller for three, and that's going to hit off the back as Bell is able to wrestle it away from Nillis. Kicks it over to Spatenka. Wide open three. And he drains it. For the Titans at 44 to 19 over the, top, the Talbots. They have put on a three point shooting clinic. And Hampton has not been able to respond whatsoever to those points. Kramer, a tough shot for three, and I don't know how he made that. A great shot there from Kramer. But the Titans turn it over right away. Alex Nihilus. Nihilus there is able to finish. Score now 44 to 24. They get a, Hampton gets a quick five points, but now Borga will foul Smetanka. Prudente has been a huge the lead scorer for the uh, Hampton Talbots tonight. Just sitting at nine points. 
You seen Smetanka? He's used, him and London have been our lead scorers throughout the season. Smetanka's leading them tonight with 13 points. Yeah, Kramer's up to 9-2, but it's just not been good enough. Now the foul, count the bucket! Joe DiSabato to the rack and finishes. Di Sabato going to the basket there. And he's not able to make it three points on that possession as his free throw is off the mark. Kramer coming up the other way. And he's gonna draw the foul from Miller as he was looking to draw some contact there and he got it. Maybe with just a tad bit of embellishment. Kramer makes his first. Now since it was from three points, he gets three free throws. And he goes two for two. And Hampton will go for a substitution, but it will be for Kramer. And he goes 3-4-3 three, three from the free throw line, as he will be subbed out. He leads Hampton with 12 points. He's about to over to Bellis. Driving inside. Kicks it out to Vizaka. Spin move. Looking for the jumper. No good. But going to bounce off the backboard and still loose. Hampton's able to get it. And why Shaylor's been able to make so many free throws is they're not contested. Some of these free throws, there, aren't, there isn't a guy within like six feet of him. It's like they're practicing social distancing. Nihilus is going to be blocked by Miller, or was he? I think it was a late foul call by the official, but they got him with the block. So that'll be Miller's third foul. And London will check in the game for him. Titans still up by 20, 5.08 left to go in the fourth quarter. Quick substitution for Kramer as he's back into the game. And makes a tough jumper over the top of Bellis. And now the Titans come back the other way. Smart play there from Vizaka. Don't need to try anything risky. As he throws that one off of the support for the hoop. As that's probably not a call I've had to make before. And somewhat ironic J Viz chant from the student section. That's now Hanson will get the ball back. Perdente is going to take it up, working on Caden Morgan. Nihilus from three, no good. And London's able to wrestle it away from Cole and get the rebound. And he is fouled by Kramer. That's one of the more obvious fouls you're going to see as he practically pushed him. Well, he did push him. He didn't even try to get the ball. Warner will inbound it. Titans up 46-29. DiSabato splits the double team and tried to find him, Rod. Wasn't able to... Receive it though, and that one's going to be over the back. Borgo on the run. Will draw the foul from Smetenka and score. Starting to cut into Shaler's lead. So it makes it 46 31. Titans falling apart here as they close the deficit. Shaler's just got to see the game out. Four minutes, 16 seconds left as Borgo's free throw is no good. Now Titans will look to 
Beat the press. Orga will have it. Sends it over to Himrod. Good awareness now for, for the Titans to avoid the over and back. That's Matanka. Over now, Di Sabato. Gonna be trapped by a couple of Talbots. Able to get away to Orga. Himrod now. Sends it back over to Di Sabato. Titans. More than content to try to bleed as much of the clock as they can as now Himrod will draw the foul from Nihilus. Now one more foul will send Shayla area into the bonus. Number 12, Zach Danner on the game for the Talbots. As a game plan for Hampton might be to try to foul. We'll see. Himrod will get it. A couple of swipes at him. Himrod, wide open path to the butt basket and he is fouled. Going to the rim and he will go shoot two from the free throw line. That was called on Nallis. That'll be a second of the night. Uh, correction, that was Borgo with the foul. as Himrod will go to the line and makes his first. Sam Himrod on the line for Shaler. The Titans will be shooting free throws the rest of the game. 33, Robert Cole checks back into the game for Hampton. And Himrod extends the Titan lead up now to 17. Just over three minutes left to go. Shayla area leads Hampton 48-31. Kramer, a tough three, looking to draw some contact. Himrod, good discipline to avoid it. Pass now to Himrod, and he is blocked by Kramer. Here comes Borgo the other way. Stops over to Nihilus. He's going to pull it from three, and he makes it. Timeout, Hampton, as they cut the deficit to 14. So 2.49 left to go. Hampton fighting the uphill battle. And for Hampton, this is a late game scenario. You're down by 14 points. Going up against the Titans team has played stellar defense. It's gotta be a combination of things for Hampton. They got forced turnovers, and when they can't get them quickly, they're going to have to start fouling. They're gonna to have to start fouling. And Mark, what does Shaler need to do to try to put this game away? I think it was in the third quarter where you saw a huge burst of energy the Titans had. It was turn off the traffic, turn off the turnover. That's the kind of energy the Titans need to have for the remainder of the game. They just need to be, they have the chemistry. They just need to be able to run the plays that they have and just put some points up on the board. Keep the shooting. Their shooting has been on over the top tonight. The three points has been the major key for the Titans scoring tonight. The energy has not died whatsoever, as you've seen from our pet man and student section. Himrod will inbound it for Shayla area. Gets it into Disabato, who's gonna race up the court, and he will be fouled. And that will send him to the free throw line. So every foul now is the equivalent to the old double bonus, no single bonus anymore. And that makes it that much harder for Hampton to try to come back because no matter what now, Shaler's got two opportunities to add to their lead. Di Sabato will miss the first, hoping to make up for it now with his second. And it goes 0 for 2. And that's going to stay with Shaler. Looks like London was able to knock it off Cole. And the less possessions Hampton can have, the better for the Titans. 
Warrior will inbound it. Nimrod takes it near the top of the key. He's doubled. Gets through it though, back to Orga. And he will be fouled by Kramer, and that will send Orga to the line. That is Kramer's third, but at this stage in the game, you're not taking him out. Been your best player all season long. Hasn't quite looked like it today. He's definitely picked it up though in the second half though. He has picked it up, but he's still your guy if you're Hampton. You gotta keep going with him. Orga makes the first from the line. Miller's gonna check in. Right now, yep, they're gonna give it to him, and now gonna go in for Bazaka. If I were to put one Titan on the on the free throw line tonight, I'd put Orga. As he has been almost he's been perfect for the night. And he makes a second now, 50 to 34. That puts him now at 13 for the night, tied with Spatanka. Now Kramer. Over to Nihilus, he's gonna pull from three. He's been their best three-point shooter of the night, but he's gonna miss there. And now we're gonna foul London. Teams have been pretty disciplined, not too many fouls being called. But still, now you have the Talbots starting to get into foul trouble. And when you're down by 16, you need your best scorers out there. And now they're starting to get into some dangerous position. As London will make his first. And with every free throw, every point the Titans score makes it that much harder for the Talbots to come back. His free throws off the mark, but Miller's able to get the rebound. We saw this against South Fayette. Shaler was able to get some offensive rebounds off of free throws to help them win that game. Nimrod can get out of it. Matanka will be fouled, and he will head to the line. That's Borgo again. That's his fourth, so his next foul, he's out of the game. Spatanka looking to get up to 15 points here. From his 13. There's 14. Increasing the Titans now to 52. Makes his first, and there are a lot of takeaways you can, you can take away. I guess I used the same word twice from this game, but it's been the combination of that great opening to the second half, start of the third quarter for the Titans, and the fact that they've just played phenomenal defense. I mean, Hampton's been scoring, I think, around 68 points. Let me take a look at the stats, but 68 points per game. You've limited them now, 34 with under two minutes left to go. Kramer's gonna pull one from three. No good, Spatanko Spatank will gather the rebound. Spatanko was able to make that second free throw. Put the Titans in now 53, and him at 15 for the night. Mid-30 left to go. Smetanka will call a timeout with 1.31 left to go. And the wise decision there is you don't want to turn the ball over late in the game. And since you have three timeouts, might as well use one there. So Peter Kramer, he's been the man for the Talbots. Not tonight, he has 12 points. But he hasn't been up to his standard. 28 points per game for him. The Titans have. Spatanka has 15 points. Just a little bit under of his season mark of around 17 and a half. Borges is Titans' second leading scorer with 13. Uh, he was out with an illness for the North Hills game. But that hasn't slowed him down whatsoever in this one. Another thing the Titans have that we'll say so many times is the depth they have on the team. They have so eight solid players that can rotate in and out at any time. And the Talbots looking like they only have maybe six, seven, which is really a key point here. Maybe yeah. if one of your guys get into foul trouble, you sell them out for another player, but you're not really losing much. Those eight players, all seniors for the Shale area Titans. 
be as, some pretty big shoes to fill next as year. As Borgo will pick up his fifth foul, and he's out of the game. Titans up 19. Looking to put the exclamation point on a dominant victory over a highly ranked team in the Hampton Talbots. Grossman's going to go in for the first time tonight. We're 23 for the Talbots. London is off the mark with his first. And this is almost a reversal of exactly what happened last year out there in Allison Park. The Titans were able to pull away. It was a low scoring game in both contests, but the home team was able to pull away. And for the Titans, this season has been four years in the making. Some of these guys have played varsity for four years. So we're taking Disa Bato starting for them. And with that much experience, they were the most experienced team in the Whippeal. And they have shown it here tonight, pulling away from a talented, undefeated Talbot team. But that is no more as the Titans are going to be sending in the backups. Under a minute left to go, 45 seconds to be precise. Titans looking to just dribble out the clock and get out of here with their seventh straight win to begin the season. And there's some pressure close in to Spatanka. He's going to take it out. Now over to Orga. 20 seconds left to go. And in this latest chapter of the Roots 8 rivalry, it was a one-sided contest. Your Shaler Area Titans keep their undefeated season alive with a huge 53-34 win over the Hampton Talbots. And that is it for us up here in the booth. Join us down on the court for post-game coverage of the Titans' victory tonight. And welcome to the SATV post game show. We're going to finish off the victory here for the Titans 53 to 34 over the Talbots. And we, let's take a look at the box score, Mark. Um, yeah, so for the first quarter, it was the Titans led over to Hampton Talbots 12 to 7. Second quarter, it was 23 to 13, scoring 11 points and 6 points. Third quarter was 39 to 17, scoring 16 and 4 points. In the fourth, the final quarter was 53 to 14. The biggest deficit, or the biggest amount of points scored by the Talbots was 14 to 17. What was interesting though is Hampton doubled their points in the fourth quarter, which looks bad on paper, but then he realized the Titans were up by 22 going into in the third quarter. So all they needed to do is not blow a 22 point lead. And really, that's where the Titans won the game. That dominant third quarter, 16 to four. Whenever you can win quarters like that, that's how you win games, that's how you beat good teams. And that's what Shaler area will have to do going on in the future if they're going to want to contend for a Whippeal title. And they have all the makings of a championship team. You've got the depth. You've got an eight-man rotation that they've used very well. And for Hampton, they've still got the piece of a good team. Every night can't be your night. Peter Kramer, he was their, Hampton's best player, but he was nowhere close to that 28-point average that he has throughout the season. Yeah, definitely. The atmosphere tonight was just a huge aspect in the, I think, Kramer's and the entire overall team's performance. Worked in the Titans' favor, but overall just an amazing game and is going to just keep the Titans rolling on to an undefeated season. Yeah, they stretched that winning streak now to 7-0. and A lot of players for the Titans were good in this win. Keegan Smetanka, 15 points. Orga, 13. And you, you take a look at that, when you have multiple guys, and Brandon Lund picked up nine points as well, when you have those guys hit those marks, like every player who played for the Titans scored. So when you can have that kind of performance, other teams that the Titans have played this year have not been able to replicate that. And that's going to be a big key for them going forward. And that will end things here on our post-game show. For Mark Povich, Matt Brucker, Mr. Miller, and all of us here at SATV, we wish you a happy holiday season. And we'll see you next time. Goodbye from Jim A.